Thank you for joining us today. Please take a moment and visit theramp.org to get connected with us. We want to know what God is doing in your life through this ministry. Also, if you would like to support the ministry financially, you may do so there. Now prepare your heart to hear from our team. We pray this will enrich your walk with God. Hello everyone, Lauren Bentley here, and I am so excited that you've jumped on the podcast today. We are thrilled to have you, and I'd like to introduce my good friend, Morgan Morris, who is a member of Chosen, and she's also the founder of the Kumi Collection, which is my personal favorite online boutique. And uh, Morgan, just say hello, and then I'd love for you to share, we were just talking about how you've been on Chosen for the last four years, you and your husband, Josh. So maybe share with them just a couple of things that really sticks out to you about this time and Mm -hmm. the season in your life and what you, uh, some of the things that you're enjoying about it. Oh yeah, well, first off, I'm so excited to be here and I'm so excited about the topic that we have today because even in this time of um, being at home, not not being able to go to church or come to conferences, which we wish you were here with us. Um, it's so important to have good friends. And even if maybe we can't go to their houses, to have good conversations with good friends over the phone. And that's kind of what we're talking about today. Right. So um, tell us a little bit about these last four years of being on Chosen and just um, what that experience has been like for you and your husband, Josh. Um how <laughs> it's on the spot question because it's four years of our life that we've devoted um, to God into this ministry. You know, a lot of people look at our lives and they question why we do what we do and why we've given up everything for this call. But when you look at the life of Jesus and the cross he he bore and he carried for us, you know, four years of giving up family friends, good jobs, a lot of things. It's nothing. It's nothing compared. It's no price compared to his. And it has just been the most amazing experience. It's been the most amazing experience to watch just changed lives. Josh and I, uh, we had this little pamphlet we were going through one day and it was just a questionnaire. And it asked, what is the most beautiful thing that like you've ever seen? And I, and I just said, at conferences when we have that altar call and those kids come running up and we see those faces and we see that the seeds that we've sown in this season that it's it's bearing fruit and lives are being changed it makes it all worth it so that's so good and it's it's really fun I think even this conversation is really cool because you know we started the ramp 20 years ago over 20 years ago now can't believe that but um, so I'm one of those original chosen members. And then we have, I mean, you're on the team mm-hmm. right now. Oh yeah. I watched you when I was little. I was <laughs> nine years old watching say just you. Me. Oh my gosh. Don't well, say that. That's depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really cool to have this conversation because some of those same things that really, um, drove the very foundation of what chosen was mm-hmm. and, and why we did what we did is, I mean, it's still happening and, mm-hmm. and you're now, it's like that yes became your yes, yes, which becomes someone else's mm-hmm. yes, to say yes to Jesus and the call that he mm-hmm. has for their lives. So I just think it's a neat thing. I'm so excited to have Morgan on with us today. And I'm really excited about the topic that we are on. We're going to tell you the five people that you need in your circle. This is critical. And mm-hmm. I really love that we started out with Chosen because, um, you know, one of the things that, one of the quotes that's always stuck out to me is this quote by Jim Rohn. He said, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And I can tell you for a fact that the ramp, I mean, of course, the call of God and and just him putting this passion and desire, but really one of the ways that he used, one of the Mm -hmm. things that he used to really form the foundation was friendship Mm -hmm. or just relationship with each other. And what we were a youth group, Mm -hmm. you know, that just all of a sudden we started burning for Jesus together and had this call, this drive to impact. It started with just impact our high school and then it was impact the region. And then it was, you know, what can God do Mm -hmm. through a yes? Mm-hmm. And whenever you have friends who are after the same things you're after and driving, just have that in, inner drive to do something and reach people and say yes to God, mm-hmm. um, you become 
the average of those people like mm-hmm. that that drive that whole environment and culture sets the tone for your own mm-hmm. life that's really what the ramp is built on you, you know? know what's so interesting is when i came to the ramp school of ministry my core friends you know the ones that i just clicked with and that i kind of ran beside more so i mean i was friends with everyone but you know my core people my core friends we all ended up being on chosen together and i'm not saying that we were something i'm saying that when we pick our friends it's important that we're picking friends that we can really run beside and i think it's just so interesting that um that yes we were chosen but you know out of the crowd but it was because we were already grouped together i think that's so funny and then you know we got to run for three four more years together so i just think that's very interesting how that works how our friends almost like you said it kind of shows you your future that's right and i love that verse that we were talking about earlier um about yes. choosing your friends yes it's, it's proverbs twelve twenty six, and it says the righteous choose their friends carefully and that's so <laughs> important who your friends are because like that quote said it's showing you your future where you're going is kind of where your friends are and so you just want to jump into yeah our five. so the first person the first friend you need to have in your life is the fence builder. You need to have someone who is your fence builder. And we got that. I know it's kind of funny, but we got that from a quote I found. And it's just an unknown quote, or it's written by some, we don't know. <laughs> we don't know who it's written by. Somebody great Somebody said this. They had a great Thank you. <laughs> but it says, a true friend overlooks your broken fence and admires the flowers in the garden. And then helps rebuild the fence. Is that not just so beautiful? I love that quote. That, you know, none of us are perfect. And it's so important to have a friend who can not only see all the dirt in our life, but can focus on the gold. And will not only focus on it, but will pull that gold out. Or like we're talking about, the flowers. They'll see the flowers. And yes, there's a broken fence, but they're not just going to leave it broken. They're going to come in and they're going to help us work and help us build those places back up. And you had a verse that talked about that. Yes. Proverbs 24, 3 it says, wise people are builders. They build families, businesses, and communities. So actually in all of these five people, we're going to give you lots of verses because this is so important. Mm-hmm. It's important who, what friends you choose. So wise people, you want to be around wisdom. The wise people are those who are builders. And also we want to give you a little bit of a picture of what's the opposite of the kind of person we're talking about. So the opposite of our fence builders is someone who's out there looking for your weaknesses, Mm -hmm. um, who's really just he or she may find that weakness in you and find an opportunity to gain something personally or or just um, to take a step over you or something like that where that's not the kind of person that you want in your inner circle. You want someone who can see through that mm-hmm. broken fence, see that yes, you have you are human, you make mistakes, you're not perfect, but that can look deeper into the heart of who you are and see the gold mm-hmm. and mine that gold yes. and see the beauty that's there. Um, that they can see that instead of just the places that are broken. Yeah, I, th- I look at it kind of like this, a simple version or a synopsis of what she sa- just said. A fence builder comes in, sees the broken fence and says, oh, let's let's rebuild this. But someone who comes in just to destroy it is going to come in and see the broken fence and point out, look, you have a broken fence and it, they're just going to wave it in your face. They're not going to try to help you. And you know what? They may kick the fence more and break it down more. So that's the difference between somebody who's there to help build things back up in your life, hurts in your life, uh, broken places in your life. They're going to help build those places back up. But someone who's a fence destroyer is going to come in and just point out those things and bring those, bring out the dirt. They're not going to bring out the gold. They're going to point out all the dirt. You may have all these great flowers, but they're going to say, but you have a broken fence and they're going to point out that broken plate, those broken places. That's good. And the second person, the second friend, I hope that you have a pen and pencil or something, or if you're getting ready, just maybe grab something that you can jot down notes as you're listening. Mm -hmm. But the second person that you should have in your circle is the encourager. 
And I love that because, you know, we all have, I think that each one of us, as we look around Mm -hmm. our lives and our circle, there is that person that just sticks out to you as, oh my goodness, they just, I feel like I could climb a mountain and fly. You know, they just make me feel like I've hung Mm -hmm. the moon. They're so encouraging. They make me feel so good about myself. That's a person that you want to keep in your circle. So tell, talk to us a little bit about your encourager. Yes. Yeah, so I have this friend and I tell her all the time, she, well, let me go back. She will always encourage me, no matter what I do, I will bake a cake and she will tell me this is the best cake I've ever eaten in my entire life. Or I'll make a sale or do something, you know, for my store. And she says, you go girl, you're the best. And she's always encouraging. And anytime she does that, I always tell her, this is why we are friends. Because she just makes me feel better about myself and makes me feel like I can conquer the world. I can do anything. I feel so encouraged. And obviously the opposite of that would be somebody you just feel like you're a failure. They just make you feel horrible. Kind of like the person who comes in and kicks down your already broken fence. You know, somebody who comes in and disencourages you and tells you, well, yeah, you have all these great successes, but let's not forget your failures. Let's not forget you're not very, you may be good at baking cakes, but you don't make very good sweet tea. That's a lie I do, but uh, that's <laughs> besides the point. I've not had your sweet tea. I feel like I need to it's experience good. this. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. But they're, they're not going to focus on the su- success. They're going to come in and no matter how good your life is, they just want to bring you down. And so obviously we don't want friends like that. We want good friends and to be that good friend, to be the friend that's not jealous or envious when we have successes, because that's another problem, even as women, that so many times that's what makes it so hard to be friends with other women because jealousy and envy comes in. And I'm sure it's the same for guys too, but as a woman, that's <laughs> what really, I know. It's a fear of scarcity. It's mm-hmm. like if you succeed, then there's not enough room for yes. me to succeed. Mm-hmm. And Which is I, a lie. That's a lie. Yeah. I mean, it's just that fear of scarcity and fear is a liar. It's just making yes. you believe this thing that's not true mm-hmm. as though someone else succeeding would mean that you don't you mm-hmm. don't have the same opportunity. Mm-hmm. Well, that's not true. You do. There's not a, that scarcity mentality is just not mm-hmm. a real thing. And it's, it's just really the enemy trying to steal friendships from you and steal purpose from you too. I kind of see it like this when an encourager would come in and see you um, be successful and they may be or that person may be ahead of you and that person is having great success and you're here maybe not having great success but I can still come in and lift that person up. I can still encourage them and say go higher. A disencourager would come in and see well, that person's ahead of me and they're having great success and I'm not. So I'm going to try to pull them down to where I am because that makes me feel bad about myself. Right. And to be or to have that friend, to have a friend that can come in and celebrate our victories, you have to be that friend for somebody else. You have to be confident in who you are, who your God is, what your call is, that you can celebrate someone else's victories. You know, we're all the time sowing seeds in our thoughts and what we watch and in our conversations and our friendships seeds are being sown and seeds will produce fruit good or bad or bad seeds are being sown when we um like when I call my mom and she encourages me and she tells me good things those are good seeds being sown but when I call a friend who's just you know maybe gossiping or maybe just trying to destroy me, those are sowing seeds too. And what we allow to stay or what conversations, what conversations we have with friends that we allow to stay is what's going to take root and produce fruit. Yes. So even right now, maybe you need to pause this and just take a moment to assess your friendships, to assess this, to look at this friendship and say, when I walk away from this friend, Do I feel like I can conquer the world? Do I feel hopeful? Do I feel better about myself? Or do I feel worse about my life and everything? Do I feel more depressed? Do I feel angry? Do I feel hopeless? I think it's important to know who are the life givers, which is our third friend that you need to have in your life is a life giver. That's right. Or are we 
do we have life drainers, life sucker, you know, people who just drain the life out of you that you walk away and you just feel heavy and you feel worse and you feel like they just put a load of weight on you when you left the conversation. So an example of someone who's not a life giver is you feel wonderful and you're happy and you're just having the best day ever. And you get a com- you get a phone call and you answer the phone and it's your friend and she is just going off about you'll never guess what I heard. You'll never guess what she did. I heard that she was talking about you. And you leave that conversation feeling heavy, feeling horrible about yourself because was someone talking about me? Then that kind of turns into anger and why would she be talking about me? And you, you're in the shower six hours later that night and you're still angry and you're still upset. And so good. And why what happened you let a seed be sown into your life you let it not only be sown but you let it stay and you let it take root and by not stopping the conversation but by continuing the conversation that seed took root and grew that seed was watered (laughs) that seed you let light shine on it and now it's growing and it's producing fruit of anger and depression and you wonder where it came from we need to look at our conversations that's so good but the same way we could produce bad fruit it's the same way we could produce good fruit by having good conversations by having those life giving friends that's right i love this i love this verse in proverbs 26 it says this and this is so true it says Gossip is so delicious, and how we love to swallow it, for slander is easily absorbed into our innermost being. Okay, so what, even just with what you were just saying, I mean, you do get those phone calls, and it's like, hey, you'll never believe what Mm -hmm. they were saying about you. And guess what? Does that not make your ears perk up? (laughs) Who was saying what about me? You can't be serious. Oh my gosh, I can't believe she would do, you know, stoop Mm -hmm. so low, and that person that's just fill in the blank and all of this stuff. Well, as soon that that's gossip is so delicious and how we love to swallow it Mm -hmm. danger danger red alarms your your red alarm should be going off yeah but it's interesting i mean you know all those um facebook spammers that are trying to get your information it's Mm -hmm. like one of the things that they say on their message to get you to try to click the link is you'll never believe what they've said about you or look at look at what i just saw about Mm -hmm. you well, wow. they know that is clickbait. Yes. That will get somebody to click on it mm-hmm. because it's so delicious. What you, what are they saying? Yep. And um, but that those conversations are very dangerous. I mean, you know what? If there's somebody that's going to be talking about you or 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 saying or I mean, there are people that do get a lot of um, excitement out of gossip and slander. That's sad. Um, but if you base your own life around all of those things that they're saying. Mm-hmm. That's just not the kind of life that you want to have. And those friendships are not life-giving to you. Mm -hmm. You want to have friendships that are putting those fires out. Listen to the verses that come before that verse. It says this, It takes fuel to have a fire. A fire dies down when you run out of fuel. So quarrels disappear when the gossip ends. Mm -hmm. Add fuel to the fire and the blaze goes on. So add an argumentative man to the mix and you'll keep strife alive. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking around your life and you're just wondering, why does my life just seem like it's filled with conflict at every turn? Mm -hmm. There's just somebody's mad and there's this whole dramatic situation exploding. Like, why is my life just filled with conflict? Well, look around at the people who are around you. Mm -hmm. Are you surrounding yourself with life givers? Mm -hmm. Or are you surrounding yourself with people who stir up strife, with gossipers, Mm -hmm. and listening to that, and letting your mind be filled with Mm -hmm. those things? And, um, and you know, another thing, so a peacekeeper is a life giver and also a trustworthy person is a life giver. Someone that yes. you know that you can go to, you can trust them with your yes. secrets and they're not out there just ready to share mm-hmm. those things and blab them with the world and get a sense of their own importance by this inside information that they know. Mm-hmm. Be a trustworthy friend. And there's a, there's a verse in Proverbs 25 verses nine through 10, it says this, Don't reveal another person's secret just to prove a point in an argument. Or you could be accused of being a gossip and gain a reputation for being one who betrays the confidence of a friend. Well, that's a serious thing. (laughs) Yeah. 
It's not just a matter of you're not being trustworthy or or you're just saying this to prove a point. No, what was said to you was spoken in confidence. Mm -hmm. Be a good friend. You don't like it whenever your secrets are shared, even if it's in a moment of heat and it's in an argument and it's Mm -hmm. like this point would prove it home. Like this would drive it home. This would make me the winner. You know what? If it makes you do something wrong to win the argument, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Just let that drop. Be a life-giving friend and make sure that you have a life life-giving friend yes. in your circle. Yes. Um, I was thinking, I, uh, my husband and I are also <clears throat> the middle school pastors, and we were doing a lesson or a lesson on seeds. We've been actually teaching on it for the past few weeks. And our first week, that was our main point, was not only telling them, yes, seeds are always being sown, but it was guard your heart, guard your mind. What are you allowing in? Seeds are going to bear fruit. And, you know, you can't plant strawberries and get watermelons, you know, whatever the conversations we're having, they're going to produce fruit. So stop them. I'm not saying go tell that person, I'm not your friend anymore and be a mean person. No, I'm just, (laughs) for example, the other day I have a really good friend and um, there was just some craziness happening on happening on Facebook, per usual Facebook. So uh, she came to me, and I had already taken these people off my Facebook because I didn't even I don't even want to see it. But she came to me, and she was trying to read me all the comments, and I just told her politely that I took those people off my Facebook for a reason. I'm just not into that kind of stuff. I just I don't even want to hear it. It's and yes. you can do it in a nice way. So I'm not saying somebody that it's a sin when somebody tries to share share gossip gossip with you but when we allow those things to stay and we shine light on them and we water those things they're going to produce fruit so we just need to stop it at the seed you know we talk about root issues a lot but roots come from seeds so we need to watch what seeds we're allowing to be sown into our lives and i love that we're talking about life giving because we're about to we're about to talk about the um, next friend you need to have, which is a mentor, and a mentor. Oh, we've is, got one more. The standard setter. Oh, is that next? Yep. Well, I'll let you go on, and then I'm going to. Okay, say I'm going to talk about the standard <laughs> setter because we want to we want to end with the mentor because okay. that's such a critical one. Um, so the standard setter. This is an important friend that you need to have in your inner circle. So the standard setter is based off of Proverbs twenty two one. This was a verse that my grandmother, I just remember her talking to me about this verse over and over again. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name. Make sure that your reputation is more important to you than really anything else. Mm -hmm. It is your reputation. And here's the thing. Your friends are determining your reputation. If you have this drive in you and you want to like change the world and you've got all of these things that you want to do, but all of your friends, all they ever do is sit around and play video games all day. Um, well, you're probably, for one thing, you're probably playing video games with them and you're probably also not doing much to activate those gifts mm-hmm. and sharpen those skills that would that the Lord really needs you to yep in order to do the things that you're called to do. But you know those, I mean, you know the kinds of reputation and Mm -hmm. how many times have we heard the stories of, they just got in the wrong group of friends. They just got in the wrong group of friends over and over, wrong group of friends. Well, you choose your friends and you know those reputations. Mm -hmm. They speak for themselves. You know the kind of people that are walking Mm -hmm. down the halls of your high school, that are in class with you, that are living in the dorms with Mm -hmm. you. You know those people. You know what they're known for. You know what they do. And to be, to have that standard setter in your friend group is somebody who you know their reputation, Mm -hmm. that they've chosen to have a good Mm -hmm. name, that they have honor in their life and Mm -hmm. integrity they're unwavering in that place they're not changing (laughs) you know what they stand for Mm -hmm. and you you look at that and go that's the kind of person that i want to be get in this inner circle i need you yes i think also that in the same way it's easy to get in the bad group and then you know you go off and that's how so many testimonies (laughs) happen is when you have that standard setter you have someone to run beside uh, when I go to work out, it's so much easier when I have a partner there because it's pushing me, not in a way that I'm running against her and I've got to beat her and I've got to be better, 
but it's just somebody there beside you that's where you are that is unwavering like I said that's not going to change so maybe on your rough days when you're you just want to give up they're not quitting and for some reason when you have somebody there that is not quitting that just puts a drive in you that says like if she's not quitting I'm not quitting and you need that person that is not going to quit that is setting that standard that you can run beside in your life that's so good I hope y'all are listening and taking notes this is good (laughs) all right number five the last person Mm -hmm. is the mentor this is the fifth person that you need in your inner circle yes so what I what I was saying earlier was we have friendships and mentorship in our life and I think a mentor is somebody who is there to pour into us and that is so important and it's so important to have not only mentors but have friends because I look at the Dead Sea and if you're all the time just being poured into and you're never pouring out there's no life there and that's what I was saying about life those life givers is there is life in friendship and there's a life in mentorship that it's important not only to be poured into but to pour out and also it's important not to only pour out all the time into other people it's important to have that person that you can look to and so many times we have this weird paradigm that our mentor has to be some far-flung person that we right. don't have relationship with and that's not really I mean they can mentor you in a way and maybe through their podcast or whatever but you need somebody in your life that you can have a relationship with my mentor is also my friend but she's somebody that can come in and say you need to fix these things you need to change these things or that can come in and be an encouragement or that can come in and say you did this right you did this maybe not so right and you can shape this up a little bit so it is important to have both of those to have the fence builder who will come in and help you build the fence a mentor will come in and say hey you've got a few broken places and pieces that I think this is a good way to fix it maybe they can't stay there and help you rebuild it but that's why you've got your fence builder to come in right but a mentor is there to kind of watch over you and it's also I think it's so important to have when you're looking for your mentor if you don't already have one to look and say in 40 years that's where I want to be that's who my mentor is when I look at my mentor, I say, yep, in 40 years, I'm gonna, that is exactly where I'm gonna be. Her passion, her drive, her, I mean, don't just look at maybe their job or whatever. You need to look deeper, like where right. are That's they? So Even in the relationships, you yep. need to look, do I want to be them? Before you pick your mentor, you need to say, would I, not to say you're gonna grow up and be that person, right? but they're going to help lead and guide and direct your life. So you need to want to be on their path, that path. So, so good. Come. So true. Yeah. And it, and it is this, we're talking about your inner circle of people. So, mm-hmm. you know, there are a lot of people that both of us look up to that are on platforms and, and I read their books and I listen to their messages and in a sense, they are mentoring me. But the person that we're really talking about right here is the person who's in your life mm-hmm. and it may be your mother, it could be your youth yep. pastor, but it's somebody who can call you out, yes. who can show you exactly where mm-hmm. the enemy has tried to hide to keep you from your purpose. And um, so make sure that you have that person in your inner circle that you can call. Mm -hmm. So I have a verse from Proverbs 4. Let me read this. It says, my son or daughter, if you will take the time to stop and listen to me and embrace what I say, you will live a long and happy life full of understanding in every way. I have taken you by the hand in wisdom's ways, pointing you to the path of integrity. Your progress will have no limits that's good when you come along with me and you will never stumble as you walk along the way so receive my correction no matter how hard it is to swallow for wisdom will snap you back into place her words will be invigorating life to you so that is what a mentor is there to do Mm -hmm. they are there to snap you back into place (laughs) but here's the thing i mean did you hear that it says that whenever you choose to walk with wisdom Mm -hmm. and have a voice that's able to speak into you and 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 is encouraging you and and giving you those words of wisdom to, to tell you exactly what what's going on and even which way you should go and help you make some of those big critical life decisions. It says this right here. Mm -hmm. Your progress will have no limits when you come along with me. That means ceilings off, lids Mm -hmm. off to what you can accomplish 
And what you do, your purpose has no limits. Mm -hmm. I didn't write the verse down, but it's in Proverbs. But it says that to be wise, you need to walk with the wise. Yes. So that's kind of what I was saying. Like, can you look at that person? Is that the person you want to be spiritually, emotionally, like... You don't, your mentor doesn't need some to be somebody who's all over the place. You need somebody who's grounded, knows who they are, knows who their God is, and is firm in, in their calling, in their life, in their relationships. You need somebody who you aren't coming in and helping them, right? That they are helping you and they are guiding you. So as we close today, Morgan, why don't you just walk us back through these five people Tell us again, the five people, these are the five people you need in Mm -hmm. your circle. So you need the fence builder, you need the encourager, you need the life giver, you need the standard setter, and you need a mentor. Awesome. Okay, so I hope you took notes, and we have just a little bit of homework for you. Is that okay? We love homework. homework. (laughs) You're studying at home anyways, so here's a little bit of homework. Okay. The first thing, I want you to write down the names of the five people that you spend the most time with. What are their names? Mm -hmm. We're talking about outside of your immediate family. I know that you probably could write all your brothers and sisters. Outside of that, you know who they are. Mm -hmm. Write down their names. What I want you to do then is I want you to assess each of these friendships and put a a name on them. Is one of them your encourager? Is one of them your fence builder? Is one of them, oh, I didn't give you the opposite of the standard setter, but you know, we have opposites of each one of these. So the opposite of the standard setter is the go nowhere. So is <laughs> is one of your friends the go nowhere? You need to star that one and go, hmm, question mark. <laughs> <laughs> so who, who are each of those people mm-hmm. in your life? And where do they fit into each of these categories? And then the third thing I want you to do is I want you to assess yourself mm-hmm. in each category. What kind of a friend are you? Are you the fence builder or are you someone who's looking for weaknesses? And and not what you want to be. Not the kind of friend you want to be. The kind of friend you are. Like how I was talking earlier to assess your relationships by when you walk away, how do you feel? What are your attitudes? Maybe assess your friends. Watch them walk away and see... What are their attitudes? What are their emotions? What are they going to do with their life? Are, am I encouraging them to walk in who they are in God? Are they walking away feeling better? Or are they walking away seemingly a lot heavier than when they came? So be honest with yourself in this. Very important. And so, yes, assess yourself. Find where you are in each one of these categories. And I think that you'll become a better friend Mm -hmm. and you'll have better friends around you. And it's just so important. Why? Because you really are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. So let's just close today in prayer. And um, and Morgan, would you pray over over everyone listening and over their friendships as we close? Well, God, I just thank you for every person listening. And God, I pray that you would give them the wisdom and the guidance in who they choose as their friends. God, I thank you that you would give them the grace to do it. I pray that you would give them the grace and the mercy and the patience to be a good friend, to be these good friends. And God, I just thank you for your grace is sufficient for in the areas maybe we lack in. And I thank you, God, that any place that maybe they don't have a fence builder, that, God, you would place those relationships in their life in the name of Jesus. And I just thank you. I bless the listeners today in the name of Jesus. Awesome. Well, Morgan, thanks for coming thank and you being so on much the podcast for me. with us. And thank you so much for watching or listening from wherever you are. We are blessed that you are a part of the ramp, and mm-hmm. we just feel so deeply connected to each one of you. Thank you so much, and we will talk to you soon. We hope you've enjoyed this message from the ramp. For more information on this message and other teachings, visit us at theramp.org slash store. Connect with us for all the latest news on services, events, and more by following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. God bless, and we'll see you next week.